In this problem, we have a pulley system, and this pulley system consists of one rope. It has one rope that connects a collar at A, a weight at C, and a collar at B. So what happens is these collars A and B are allowed to move up and down along this rod right here. And what we want to do is we want to figure out an expression for the acceleration of C. And then we want to figure out how far C moves after three seconds. We're given a bit of other information. We're told that columns A and B start from rest. A moves up at 3t squared millimeters per second squared. And B moves down with a constant acceleration. And after moving 700 millimeters has a velocity of 150 millimeters per second. Now, to deal with this pulley problem, the first thing we need to do is we need to establish a datum point and we need to establish our coordinate system. So I'm going to pick this line as my datum point. It goes through a fixed point right here and everything is to one side of it. I'm going to say that anything going down in this problem is going to be positive. That means anything going up is going to be negative. Next, what I need to do is I need to define the length of all the particles that move. If I look at this problem, I know that this pulley at A is going to move. If, if A and B are moving down, this pulley at A is going to move. And this pulley defined is in line with um, collar A. I know that these two pulleys at C are going to move, and they're actually in line with each other, even though they might not look it. So they're together. I have this pulley at A. And this collar at B is going to move. I'm going to define the lower edge of this distance at B because that's where the rope connects to. So I have these three distances. And what I'll actually do, I'll make these dotted just so the problem looks a little less busy. So I don't want to, I don't want to make that reference line dotted. I just want to make the lines right here dotted. And then I want to actually dimension these. So this distance to A, I'm going to call some S sub A. This distance to B, I'm going to call some S sub B. And this distance to C, I'm going to call some distance SC. There's one more distance I should uh, define. And I'm sort of getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I want to define this entire length right here from from the reference point to the floor, I want to define this as some distance h. Because what happens is when I go to calculate the length of the rope, I need to start at one side of the rope and work my way around. So when I'm calculating the distance of the rope, this first length right here is going to be whatever that I called that distance. In this case, I called it h. It's going to be h minus wherever this pulley is. And that pulley location is defined as SA. So I'm going to have, this is going to be the length of the rope. I'm going to have H minus SA. And that again is this length of the rope. Next I have this length. And what's that length? That is this pulley, which has a length of SC. And it's referenced in terms of pulley A. So that length right here needs to be SC minus SA. So plus the distance of SC minus SA. Okay. Now we have this length. Well, this length is just SC. So I have a plus SC. And this length is also SC. So this is going to be plus SC again. Now this length right here is going to be a distance of SC minus SB. So I'll have plus SC minus SB. Let me put SC in the right color. And this is equal to some length L, so some total length of the rope. Now I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to say this is going to be H minus 2SA 
plus one, two, three, four SC minus SB. And this is going to be again equal to L. Now let's take the derivative of my position with respect to time, so I'll get velocities. When I get the velocities, all my constants go away, so I'm left with minus two times the velocity of A plus four times the velocity of C minus the velocity of B is equal to zero. I wanna take another derivative. So if I take the derivative of velocity, I get acceleration. Minus two times the acceleration of A plus four times the acceleration of C minus the acceleration of B is equal to zero. So now I have an expression that relates my acceleration of A, my acceleration of B with my acceleration of C. I now need to go back to my problem description and see what information they give me about any of these. First, my acceleration of A. I know that my acceleration of A, because I'm moving up, it, acceleration is gonna be minus three T squared millimeters per second squared. Now, what about the acceleration of B? The acceleration of B, we're not told what it is, but we're told that it's constant. Because it's constant, this means we get the okay to use the kinematic equations. But we need more information. And we're given a couple of pieces. So we're told that it starts from rest. So our initial velocity of B is equal to zero. Our, so after B moves 700 millimeters, so our final position of B is equal to 700 millimeters. It has a velocity of 150 millimeters per second. That means the final velocity of B is equal to 150 millimeters per second. And we also, we'll just say that our initial, velo our initial position of B is equal to zero millimeters. And that's all that we are given. Now, if we're given these pieces of information, we're not given anything with time and we don't know what acceleration is. So that means the two equations we have that our velocity is equal to our initial velocity plus acceleration times time, and x is equal to x naught plus b naught t plus one half a t squared, we can't use these because we just don't have enough information. So the, the equation we need to use is we need to use the final velocity squared is equal to my initial velocity squared plus two times my acceleration times the different, the change in position. So the final position minus my initial position. And these are all dealing with particle B. So my final velocity is 150 squared this is equal to zero squared plus two times my acceleration of B times this distance of 700 minus zero, so 700. Let's do this calculation. So what I have is 150 squared, and this is gonna be divided by two times 700, and I get an acceleration of B which is equal to 16.07 millimeters per second squared. And we know it's constant. So now let's plug these accelerations back into this equation and let's solve for C. So to do this, I'm actually gonna move them over to the other side. So I get the acceleration of C four times the acceleration of C is equal to two times the acceleration of A plus the acceleration of B. Okay, so now I have four times the acceleration of A is equal to two times minus three T 
t squared plus 16.07. Let's multiply uh, 4 times the acceleration of c is equal to minus 6t squared plus 16.07. And my acceleration of c is going to be equal to uh, 6 divided by 4. So minus 1.5. I'm going to just write this because it's the acceleration of c. Minus 1.5 t squared plus 16.07 divided by 4. And this is 4.02 plus 4.02 millimeters per second squared. And this is the first answer. So this is part A. What is this acceleration? Second part. Calculate, uh, determine the distance that C moves after three seconds. Now, this is my acceleration. Acceleration of A is non-constant. Acceleration of B is constant. Non-constant means I can't use a kinematic equation. So I need to perform an integration. I need to use the relationships I have. And one of the relationships I have is the acceleration is equal to dv dt. So if I put the acceleration of c is equal to whatever the velocity is uh, of c is and the time of c, I can take that integral. And then I can relate the velocity to position by saying the velocity of c is equal to the change in position with respect to time. So I need to perform two integrals to figure out what this position is. So let's do that. I'm going to have minus 1.5 t squared plus 4.02. I'm going to bring the t to the other side. So this is going to be dt is equal to dv. Let's integrate both sides. And we need to figure out the bounds of integration. So I'm going to go from some starting point 0 to some t some time. And I don't care about the velocity, so I'm going to go from some velocity of zero, I start at rest, to some velocity v. This integral right here is going to be m minus 1.5 t cubed over 3 plus 4.02 t. And if I evaluate this from t to zero, well, the zero term just goes away. And on the other side, this is the zero term goes away. So this is going to be V evaluated from V to zero. So V minus zero is just V. So now I have, have an expression for V. Let's plug it into this equation and do that integration. So minus 1.5 T cubed over 3 plus 4.02 t is equal to, uh, I'll bring the dt over here right now. So dt is equal to dx. All right, let's take this integral. And again, we're going to go from some 0, but we know uh, what t is. So t is going to be 3. We want to figure out the position after 3 seconds. And then our initial position, we're going to say is 0. So how far have we moved? And we don't know what this distance is. So we're going to be solving for that. OK. Perform this integral. And this integral is going to be minus 1.5 t to the fourth over 12 plus 4.02 t squared over 2 evaluated from 3 to 0. So the, again, all these terms have t's. So that it's, this is going to be the only term is equal to x. So now I can plug in t 
I can plug in a three for T. And when I do that, let's do that, I get minus 1.5 times three to the fourth divided by 12 plus 4.02 three squared divided by two. And I get X, the distance I've moved, is equal to 7.97 millimeters. So this was an interesting problem. We had one piece of our acceleration, which was non-constant, and another piece of our acceleration, which was constant, which meant we were allowed to use our kinematic equations of motion. But because the total acceleration of C, when we related it through a pulley problem, had both our acceleration of A and acceleration of B, our acceleration of C was non-constant, so we had to go through the integration for our accelerations to figure out how far C moved.